Welcome, this is the continuation on the series on how to use the different features of Edmodo for teachers. Uh, this next stage we're going to be looking at marking and how you could actually use Edmodo as a marking device. So, similar to last time, I'm at the login screen and I've entered my details and I'm just going to log right in. And the first thing you'll notice once I log in uh, is that we've actually got uh, up here some notifications and I spoke about these earlier on. Uh, but generally, whenever something new happens on Edmodo, you'll always receive a notification of some sort. So if I just click on this icon, you can see up the top here, I've got two turned in assignments. Um, I've also got new group members, and this is because if you've looked at some of the other videos, I've actually joined my classes as a fake student, and I've put in a couple of fake replies. So if I were to click on any of these, it would then take me to show me what's actually happening. And as you can see, um, I can see here that this particular student, whose name is Cardine Student, uh, has put in a couple of bits and pieces as to how they're going. Um, I can also look at their turned in assignments as well. Um, and it's generally good practice once you've seen this stuff just to click remove from notifications or remove all. Otherwise, you will find that this number can get quite high if you ignore it. Um, as I mentioned today, I want to talk a little bit about marking. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the home. And of course, you can see uh, right here in the middle, I can see everything that's happened in all of my classes for my English and my science and my mathematics class. Um, and I can follow things as they're happening. But today I want to look at this novel essay which I've put up. Now this is just a, a, um, a fake assignment, so there's not a lot of detail put in here. And of course, uh, we had a previous post on how you could put together your own assignments. But today we're just looking at marking. Um, I'm actually going to, I don't have to, but in this case I'm going to click on the class that I want to look at. Just to filter that information in the middle here. And as you can see, the only thing for English is this novel essay that I've put in. But I can see that you know, my instructions were write a 500 word essay on the novel of your choice and I can see here that one student has turned it in. Now seeing as there's only one student in my class I should be pretty happy with that I suppose. That's 100% success rate. Um, so I'm just going to click on this icon and it's going to take me in and normally what you'd see here it starts off just with the information about the, uh, about the assignment but down this way is where you would have your list of students. So you might have 20 or 30 students. In my case I've only got one which is Cardine student. So if I click on their name I can then see their uh, I can see their submission here and there's a couple of important things they've said here is my essay uh, I thought I would get it finished early hope you enjoy often you'll find that the student will uh, give you something you know they might give you a, um, a uh, just a note or something like that so that's usually where they'll post it and then they've actually handed up their work sample as a document now I've got a previous piece of students work here as an example if I wanted to read this I would then just click on it and this is of course going to open up in Microsoft Word you can see down here again I'm using Google Chrome but it's come up here as a download so I'm just going to click on that and it's going to open up for me So it's coming into Microsoft Word. Now I mentioned that we are, of course, looking at um, marking today, but I also just want to make a quick point about uh, editing as well. Obviously, whenever I receive a piece of work from a student, um, particularly in the senior school, I always give it an edit. And I don't like to print things off and give them back hard copies anymore. I actually do everything digitally. And a really handy way to do this is just to, now you can't actually see this on this screen, which was a bit of an oversight, but if I go up into Microsoft Word and click on the review tab, um, I can actually write comments. So I would actually come over here, you know, one of the themes in the book is racism, for example, you know, I'm just going to click new comment and that comes up on the side. And if I was writing a draft or if I wanted to do some comments, I would say, um, you know, this is a great, um, you know, this is a great topic sentence, which you know, is not really a fantastic topic sentence, but it's enough. Um, and what I would actually do is then I would save that file. So if I saved that as a separate file and I put that on my desktop, then I can attach that. So I might just call this, uh, you know, draft work and save that. Um, that's now on my desktop. Okay, so if you're doing drafting or anything like that, um, it's always great to you know make sure you save as your own copy, write your comments on the side, and then you can go back to Edmodo. So I'm just flicking down, down the bottom here back to Edmodo, and what I could do here is I could actually say, uh, here is your draft, 
and I can attach this file and I'm just again on my desktop so I can just look down here and see if I can find this it should be under M shouldn't it oh I might have gone past it draft work it was D for some reason I thought it was marked work there we go and you can see it's attached to that comment and I can add that comment on there and that goes back to the student. Now often they can then open up that file, they can rework it, they can resubmit it, sometimes they might resubmit it down in this comment section, sometimes they might resubmit it at the top, they've got the option to do that and then I could work it again. But this is just an example about how you can work with drafting on Edmodo. Now as I mentioned I was going to be looking at the assessment side of things. So let me show you a little bit about how this works. Again, I'm looking at the essay here and normally I would just have a read over this. If I go over and I actually, so I'm just going to open up another document and this is my assessment document. Okay, so here I've got my year eight task sheet. So I open this one up and if you're at Cardine College, this is the particular sheet that you'd be looking at. And what I would then do is I would go around and digitally I would actually mark their piece and usually I would do this, I have to click enable editing, usually I would do this just through using the highlighter tool so I might just click on uh, you know, just some colours or something just to say yep. Now obviously I might not be marking with all of this criteria but essentially I would go through and I would make the necessary adjustments to this to let them know what their mark is going to be and then down here I would give them their comment. Once I've done that I would usually once again save as, and I might call this Cardine student. I usually save it something to do with the name of the actual student. And in this case, once again, I'm just going to save this on my desktop. And then when it comes to the actual marking side, now I'm going to go back to Edmodo. Okay. And let's say, yep, I've marked it. Um, you know, it was an A or a B in this case. Let's be safe and say it was a B. I might say, here is your assessment sheet and I'll attach that file. It's usually good to work in folders. Usually for every assessment I do I have a folder for that assessment and um, that usually helps keep things under wraps. But you can see here Cardine student, okay, that's their assessment sheet. I then say, well, once I can see it's uploaded, I add that comment on there and there it is. So the student would log in and they would either see this is their draft, they would say this is their assessment sheet, and it shows a record of your work uh, and your dealings with that particular piece of work. As I mentioned, it was a B. Once I've, you know, I've figured that out, so let's say it was just a regular B, uh, not a B plus or a B minus, I'd then type in 75 out of 100, and I can then click grade. There you go. And there's also a little uh, emoticon here, which I could pick, so I might say, oh, that was a really admirable effort, um, or, you know, you can do it, or encouragement, or maybe it needed improvement, or it was incomplete. You can use these just as a bit of an indicator. You certainly don't have to, but they are a, a handy way to really build that culture. So as you can see here, my work is now marked. I'm going to go back to my home screen, and I'm just going to show you, once you've marked some of these things, you can actually use Edmodo as your own digital marked book. So if I actually come up to progress here and click on this tab, this is the second box along the top, and then I say, okay, I want to know how my English students are doing. I click on English, and look at that. Here's the novel essay. Here's 75 out of 100, and it tells me at the moment, it might be halfway through the term, it might be halfway through the year, that student is sitting on 75%. So as you can see, uh, the marking works quite well. There's a lot of great tools in there that you can use, uh, and generally uh, accessing student work and giving them feedback and assessment is a really easy and practical thing to do. Um, it also means that you know, maybe a year down the track, if I'm looking for some work samples that I want to show for cross-marking or anything like that, I can actually find them uh, on my online uh, on my online site because it actually keeps all of that work there as well. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful to you and uh, this gives you a bit of an idea about assessment in Edmodo.